Kim. Hab, I'm County. How nice are you doing you. today? What yeah. brings you in? Oh, I have pain on the other side of my mouth. It's very sensitive to hot and cold. It's sensitive to hot. And I can't chew on that side. It really hurts. It feels full on my face right there. I'm glad you're my dentist. Aww. Well, we'll do whatever we can to take care of you, okay? Thank you. Okay, Ms. Chung, we're just going to go over your medical history. Do you have any major health concerns? Well, I have systemic lupus erythematosus, so I take 10 milligrams of prednisone a day. I have asthma, and I definitely have problems with snoring. Now, last time I went to the hospital was when I was removing my tonsils 18 years ago. I love to smoke cigarettes, so I smoke every three days, and I drink alcohol every day. And I use marijuana on a routine basis. Oh, and I also use an albuterol for my asthma. I'm allergic to codeine and latex, so be careful with them gloves. Okay. Connie is a 26-year-old female who is 5'4 and weighs 105 pounds. She's underweight, and we want to know if there's a reason for this. Could she be snacking frequently? If so, this might have an effect on her caries risk assessment. Also, her medications, prednisone, might cause her some GI discomfort. Connie takes albuterol for her asthma, which is a beta-2 agonist. We want to make sure that she has the inhaler with her for high-stress situations such as a dental visit. Connie smokes one package of cigarettes every three days, smokes marijuana, and drinks alcohol. The smoking might have some effects on her treatment that we need to take into consideration. It could cause surface stains, and it could interfere with her perio and post-surgical healing. She states that she's allergic to latex and coating, so we want to make sure that we use nitro gloves and that we don't prescribe her any opiate analgesics or anything that could cause a hypersensitivity reaction. Ms. Chung, when was the last time you've been to the dentist? Well, I've been going since I was in my teens and my 20s. Mm -hmm. My last time was two years ago in a root canal treatment. Now, in college, I had a tooth removed because I can't afford no crown or root canal treatment. And I also have braces when I was younger. So now I got gaps in my teeth, and I don't want my teeth to ship. I want to keep my beautiful smile. Okay. Now, I don't want any more extractions. My teeth are dirty, so I need a cleaning. And every time I wake up, my teeth are sore. I think I'm clenching or something, so I need something done about that. All right. Connie has had many restorations in her mouth. We can see that she has some that are clinically acceptable still, some that have recurrent decay, some that are failing, and some that have fallen out completely altogether. The results are summarized in the odontogram and in the EPR chart. After completing perio charting, we diagnosed Connie with localized moderate chronic periodontitis. The treatment is SRP followed by a re-eval followed by maintenance. If the SRP fails, we might consider referring her to grad perio for surgery. We can determine this at the re-eval appointment. The intraoral exam revealed a bluish grayish spot between the first molar and the second premolar on the gums. Since there is an amalgam restoration on the premolar, we determine that this is an amalgam tattoo. An FMS and pano were exposed and the radiographic intert forms were filled out. A large radiolucent area in the jaw was determined to be a, a traumatic bone cyst. Ms. Chung has several disease indicators and risk factors, including the white spot lesions shown in the photograph, along with several protective factors. Overall, we have determined her caries risk to be high. This is important because we will consider it when we are making our treatment plan. The first phase of the treatment plan is the systemic phase. We must take care of Connie's systemic health conditions. For instance, she is taking prednisone and albuterol for her SLE and asthma. She is considered to be ASA3. We want to know how well controlled her conditions are. Dental appointments are considered pretty high stress for some, and we may need a medical consult to determine such things as whether she needs a steroid boost prior to any surgical procedures, or if her physician, Dr. Buddy Weezer, has any other recommendations to manage her. Next, we enter the acute phase of the treatment plan. Connie's chief complaint of pain must be addressed. She has irreversible papitis and acute apical abscess. So we bring her in for anodontic treatment to bring her out of pain. Antibiotics may also be prescribed for the infection. 
Now we enter the dental disease control phase. Our first treatment plan objective is restoring periodontal health. Connie has localized moderate chronic periodontitis, which will be treated with a limited SRP in two quadrants. After four to six weeks, we reevaluate and determine if there is a need for a surgical approach for perio or replace her on periodic maintenance. Our treatment planning objective is to remove decay and restore the dentition. We also remove any defective or failing restorations and replace them. There are many different options in restorative dentistry as far as preparation techniques, such as indirect or direct, and restorative materials to use, such as amalgam or composite. The patient must be informed of factors that could influence her decision. Finally, Connie has stated that she wants her missing teeth replaced and the gaps filled. We inform her of the options available to her, such as orthodontics, implants, bridges, or dentures. The maintenance monitoring prevention phase includes regular perio maintenance and recall exams. Since Connie has been determined to be a high caries risk patient, we must address this in the treatment plan as well. Fluoride treatments and sealants may help, along with oral hygiene instructions that are consistently reinforced at every appointment. Treatment plan number one involves endodontics, crowns, and metal restoration. We want to preserve as much of the dentition as possible and use materials that have been proven to last longer in the mouth. Treatment plan number two takes aesthetics into account. Wherever possible, we use tooth color materials such as composite fillings or porcelain pieced metal crowns. Implants are used to replace the missing teeth. Treatment plan number three extracts the teeth that cause pain rather than undergoing endodontic therapy. The missing teeth are replaced with fixed partial dentures or bridges. All three treatment plans include the same perio treatments and occlusal guard to help prevent Connie from damaging her teeth while she grinds at night. They also sell the treatment planning objectives of removing the source of pain and infection, restoring periodontal health, removing decay and restoring the teeth, replacing missing teeth, and reducing the effects of nocturnal bruxism. Ms. Chung has stated that she would like to keep her remaining teeth. Finances are not an issue, nor are aesthetics as much as durability. Furthermore, she is determined to be a high caries risk patient. Therefore, the most appropriate treatment plan favors endo over extractions to try to save her teeth and metal restorations over composite for longevity. Ms. Chung has been thoroughly informed of her treatment options, understands, and agrees to the proposed treatment plan. All right, Ms. Chung, I'm glad we could come to agreement on this treatment plan. I'm going to have you sign this informed consent form, stating that you understand everything we talked about, all the risks, and the sequence of the treatment. If you have any questions, you can call me on my cell phone or my pager at any time, okay? All right, I have no questions at all. Looks like I'll just sign my life away. All right, thank you very much. It was nice meeting you. Thank you. Take care.